Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Discover how forgiveness, self-love and self-compassion can transform your life with Farzin Mazanani in episode 129. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we're here with a very special episode tailored just for you, whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment to yourself. I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share their story that resonates at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and unwavering strength that lies within each and every one of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring narrative, a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing and sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us help the hearts of others and spread the message of healing through love. I'm very excited to introduce our guest today, Farzin. He is an author and a healer and a happiness coach. We all need a bit more happy. And he's helping people to shed their inner blocks and be aligned to the breakthroughs in their life. I'm very excited. He has a beautiful story. Hello. Welcome to the stage, Farzin. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so great to connect. Now, what we know is that people that choose this journey of helping others heal come from a place of healing themselves. It goes hand in hand. So Fazin, is it okay if we start today's conversation with talking about your, your first big challenge, yes, that got you to where you are now? Sure, yeah. And, um, you know, Pain is different than misery. So we have to know what is the difference between pain and misery. So I found that difference at age 24. How I started my search for those kind of things when I was 12 years old. So as a 12-year-old boy, I had a proper life and everything was uh, good on the outside but inside was a different story I had big questions about the meaning of life about what I'm doing in here and uh, what is the source of true joy and those kind of questions and that is odd for a 12 year old to ask those questions but I was curious I just wanted to know the answer to those questions so what happened was I was asking those questions uh, different places, like in school, in the family, from my parents, from my teachers. Nobody could give me clear answer to those. So I started to start my search. So at the time, there was no internet, as you know. It was long ago. So what happened was I, I had access to books. So... I became a bookworm. So I started collecting books and reading them, different topics about the meaning of life, different philosophies, and everything I could get my hand on. So what happened was that after 12 years, I had more than 1,000 books in my personal library. But I was even more confused than the starting point. Why? Because when you don't know, you don't know. But when you start knowing, it is like opening a Pandora box. So there are you feel that there are a lot more that you still don't know. So I was so frustrated. I couldn't get my answers. 
And to the point that I decided to make a radical decision. So what was that decision? I decided to go to my uncle and I asked him, I said that I'm going to go to that room that you have in the basement, which has no windows. But there was a washroom inside. So it was the ideal place for me. So I told him, I'm going to go into that room and stay there for a while. He said, for how long? I said, I don't know. Maybe two days, maybe two weeks, maybe two months, or maybe I never get out of that room because I'm going in there, sitting there in the dark, facing myself, and stay there until I get my answers. So that was my decision. So I went to the room, closed the door, turned the light off. So I was isolating myself from the outside world. So I was facing myself, my thoughts, my emotions. It was me and those kind of things. So everybody says that when you go to a prison, one of the punishment is solitary confinement. And I was going through a voluntary solitary confinement. Why? Because I was in pain. I couldn't tolerate it anymore. So I went inside did that so after a while you don't have a sense what's going on on the outside if it's day or night or what time it is because it's all darkness so i went through a bunch of experiences i used a lot of techniques that i knew through those books and paths that i took nothing could work so what happened after a while i gave up so after i gave up something magical happened the way I can describe it is like this. You grab an ice cube and go to the ocean and drop that ice cube into the ocean. What happens is that after a while, that ice cube starts to melt. And after it is melted completely, there is no ice cube anymore. It's, it's like just ocean. So the same thing happened to me. I felt a warm feeling in my heart and then it spread all over my body and i started feeling the heat the heat is was increasing and increasing i was sweating badly and all of a sudden there was an experience that i cannot describe it by words i just gave you an example about the ice cube that is the best way i can describe it but you feel one with everything and everyone so it is, there is no separation. The sense of separation is gone. So when that thing happens, you are open to those answers. It means that I received all the answers to those questions that I have. So I knew what I'm doing in here. I knew the difference between the joy and happiness. Do you want to know what the difference is between joy and happiness? Happiness depends upon outer circumstances. We have to have a situation or someone who help us to just be happy in life. But joy doesn't need outer circumstances and is coming from our heart. So if we have access to the source of joy, which is within our heart, it doesn't matter what, what situation we're in. So it doesn't have an opposite. Happiness has an opposite. Sometimes you're happy, some, sometimes you're sad, but joy doesn't have an opposite. So I found out that there is a difference between wisdom and knowledge as well. So what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? So knowledge is outside. So that was what I was looking for. On the outside, I was looking for things to find the answer to my questions. But wisdom is within my heart. So it means that all the time I was looking at a wrong place outside world to get the answers. But I had the answers in my heart, which is the source of wisdom that we all carry. So and I found out another thing. There is a difference between pain and misery. So what is the difference? So we have something called prefrontal cortex. We analyze everything. We mentalize everything. We compare things together. 
that is the differentiation between us and animals. So sometimes we build a lot of things with that, and sometimes it has negative consequences. One of those consequences is that when we go through a painful experience, sometimes we mentalize that, and then we make it a misery. So there is a difference between pain and misery. Pain is transient, but misery, you know, we may we make a mistake. Maybe long ago we made a mistake. We are deserved to be punished for ma for that mistake once, but we punish ourselves million times after that, and we continue doing it. It is just us as animals who do that. Nobody, nothing, no other species does that. So that is the process of turning a pain into a misery. So you get all those things from the inner, all the answers come. So I, my life basically changed after that experience. But I, I still had to grow because growing is part of our evolution. We are here to grow. We are here to expand because the whole universe is expanding. It's not just us. Everything is expanding. So if I stand still, it means that I'm moving backwards compared to the universe. So I have to grow. And in the process of growing, there is natural pain. Just like the pain that when we go to the gym, we, we lift those weights and then we feel pain in our muscle because it's getting stronger. So that is the natural process. So I had to go through a period of time in my life to experience a chronic pain. So that led to my second breakthrough. So I injured my back at work and I was lifting something and all of a sudden I went to the freeze mode, I couldn't move. And so I went to therapy, I lost my job, whatever I was doing at the time. And I went to therapy for a while and then after I felt better, I started working again in a different field. But what happened was that that chronic pain stayed with me for 15 years. Every, almost every week I had to go to physiotherapy to get out of that frozen neck because I couldn't move my head to the sides. So I had to go to therapy and they couldn't find a source of that problem that I had. Why? Because nothing was showing up in an MRI test. So what happened was a friend of mine came over and she said, maybe I can help you. So she gave me a couple of phone calls and she said that I'm releasing the trapped emotions that you have in your body that is causing that. So I didn't have any idea what she was talking about. So she explained and then we went through the the session on a phone call and then I felt better. I was expecting to get that pain again the next week, but it never came back. So I was amazed by the process and I started questioning uh, what was that. And so she explained and she said that you have the talent to do the same thing for others. So she guided me to go through the certification process to, to become a, an emotion called practitioner. So I found out that we carry a lot of unprocessed emotions, which are called trapped emotions. Trapped emotion, what is the trapped emotion? Those are the emotions that we experience, but we cannot process them completely. For example, we might fail on a test or something like that. And then we start mentalizing it. We have, we use our capacity, the brain capacity that we have, prefrontal cortex. Remember that that thing can bite us in the back somehow. So we start mentalizing things about the failure, why I failed. I We talk about others about that moment and we take it seriously. So that process is not finished. And then what happens is that our subconscious mind says that I'm going to store that emotion somewhere in the body and I'm going to deal with it later. So everybody on average 
carries more than 200 of those trapped emotions. For some people, even more than 300. So we carry those blockages, those vibrating energies, and they are vibrating less than the average vibration that we have in our body. So sometimes I describe them as a sandbag in a hot air balloon. So we have those sandbags. It is bringing us down. It is limiting our view. And everything I see is through those lenses. For example, if I have a grief, something happens for me, for one of my loved ones or something like that, I go through the process of grief. And because I cannot process it completely, I store it as the energy of grief. So I carry that kind of energy. It means that I cannot be happy. It means that I'm wearing dark shades even inside. So I see the whole world as dark, you know, that affects my view. So we have those kind of things. We carry those kind of emotional baggages that we have. So she released those and I was fine. And she released something else for me as well. That was the heart wall. So what is the heart wall? Our heart is very sensitive. Why? Because a scientist in Japan who was a physician figured that there are lines on our heart. The same lines that we get when we have a cracked bone. We go to the doctor, they put our bone under the x-ray and they see a hairline. They say, this bone is cracked. The same hairlines is on our heart based on our experiences and those are real. So heartbreak is real. I love it. it. I love it, Fazin. I love it. And you're talking about heart math and heart math is amazing. I love it. I love your reference when you're talking in and around. And I feel like you've obviously really loved the power of now because your story really resonates with everything that Eckhart talks about in The Power of Now. I love that. And I love your analogy and how you've broken down the challenges. Now, you bring to the table something interesting, and that is your life quality assessment. So can you tell our audience, our listening audience today, a little bit about your life quality assessment? Sure. So I figured out we have different um, capacities, different things in our life. It's not just one line. There are different things like health, wealth, relationship, and happiness. Those are like the four tires of a car. So what it means that if you're driving and one of the tires of your car is flat, you have to fix it. You don't have any choice. You have to do something about it. If one of them is low, you have to do something. You have to go and put some air in the tire and fix it. The same thing goes for our life. So four aspects, health, wealth, relationship, and happiness. Imagine that I'm on top of the world with all the wealth that I need, but I'm not healthy. It is something is missing in my life. I cannot even enjoy the wealth that I have. So they work together. So we have to know where we are standing. So that's why... I created a quiz for people. They can take that quiz with 20 questions. It has different parts, different sections. So about those four elements on our our life. So they get a score. It is called life quality score. So you want to know what your life quality score is based on those four elements? You can take that quiz and it gives you the score. And then you know your low mark and your high mark. They're both important. Why? Because high mark is how we can create value for the world. Because that is our talents. Because some some of us have a specific talent in relationship. We have good relationships or something like that. Or about happiness or wealth or health. So we can help others with that. We can start building businesses and do a lot of things for other people and help them along the way. And there is a low mark. 
So what is that low mark in those categories? If we find out what our low mark is, we can work on them and improve them and it enhances the quality of our life because that is something that we have to put our focus as well. So it's a very practical way to people to know where they are standing in life. I love that. I love that, Fasin. So when somebody goes through and they fill in the quality life assessment and get their score, then what Fazim is offering for you is a free consultation, an opportunity to have a look at where you are and where you want to be and what the gap in between those two are. So that's exciting. So if you're a listener today, uh, you can take the free quality life assessment. Now, where you'll find that is on the website and the links will be in the show notes and also in the description. And then from there, once you've got that assessment complete, Fazin is actually offering that free consultation. I love it. Thank you so much, Fazin, for offering that to our listeners today. Really appreciate that. And um, I was going to ask, because I'm looking at the time, just in closing today, what would be your final, your final words of wisdom to our audience? So the final words of wisdom is we are not our emotions and we are not our body. And we are not our thoughts. If I be my physical body, then what happens if I cut my hand and put it in front of me? Am I going to be a different person? No, I'm not my physical body. People are fighting for gender, for race, for the skin color or something like that. But we can go beyond it. Because why? Because we are not our physical body. We are something beyond that. We are not our emotions. We are just carrying those emotions as I described. It is like a dirt on a white shirt. So when we wear a white shirt, we go out, it gets dirty. It can be washed. There are ways that we can just clean them up. So we don't need to associate ourselves with those emotions. So we are not our emotions. We are not our thoughts. If I be my thought, what happens if I sit down and close my eyes and clean my head and have no thoughts, then I shouldn't exist, but I still existing. Something, something, something is watching the whole thing. So who is that? What is that? It's a consciousness. Some people call it soul. Some people call it consciousness. It doesn't matter what you call it, but we can go beyond those layers. And then when, when you go beyond those layers, you f- all you find is love. And you have the power of love in your heart to heal those layers. You know, if you notice, every problem that we have is is either physical or emotional or mental. So we have the capacity to go beyond those layers and do the healing through love. So that is my message. I love that. I love that. And that's straight from the heart. Thank you for listening today to this beautiful episode. And it's lovely to connect and keep your eyes out for our next episode coming out really, really shortly. If you are a survivor yourself and you're looking to heal at the speed of love, We've, we're running Pamper Days in your local community. So not only do we run them here in Australia, but also as of 2023, Healing Through Love has gone global and we now offer these beautiful Pamper Days. So think day spa on steroids where survivors come and experience all of these beautiful things their hair done, their makeup done, um, neck and shoulder massage, like you name it. We've got 25 different practitioners in that space and that is free for our survivors of family and or domestic violence. If you're a practitioner today and you're listening and you would really like to pay it forward and hold the space for others, then reach out to us at Healing Through Love. Our email is everywhere. Our website is everywhere. And have a conversation with us because we're looking for more practitioners. We've got a series of events coming up and we're also getting our events for 2025 ready. It's been a privilege to hold this space for you today to have this beautiful conversation. It's a goodbye from me and a goodbye for from Zazin. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time 
on the Healing Through Love podcast. 